Okay, I'd like to open the planning, Deerfield Planning Board meeting, uh, July 11th, 2016. It's uh, seven o'clock here at the town offices, uh, Conway Street in South Deerfield. Um, our agenda tonight, is we're gonna review the minutes and we have some public comment. Um, public hearing for the uh, Eagle Brook Solar Array. Uh, we have an ANR on Sugarloaf Street. Uh, some discussion on the subdivision bylaws and then set a date for our next meeting. So, you guys all looked at the minutes uh -huh. from last time? Do I have a motion? Or? Can I? Yeah, you can. I can move that we accept the meeting, the meeting minutes as presented. Do I have a second? If everybody goes for that. I'll second. Okay, great. Um, all in favor? All in favor? All those opposed? Um, we want to discuss? I want to discuss them a bit, I think. I don't uh, think. The only thing to discuss is that you were saying that the hearing, this took longer than it was reflected, but. Yeah, I, I mean, we did a lot of, we did a lot of uh, discussion during that, the public hearing part, but it, it really didn't seem relevant to anything because they're pretty much are, um, stymied right at the point, I think, because that's my opinion I got. I, yeah, and I think the, I think the minutes uh, really kind of got the essence of the conversation. Here he comes. Which Here they come. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hey there. He's wild. Look at that. We got going. So, um, do you want to? Okay, so we can talk about the public hearing now, or do you want to deal with the A and R? You want to vote the first? minutes then, or you want to? Oh, Maybe. Rachel made a motion, and you second it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we discussed it. We're just bit. discussing, just vote. saying that the public hearing was took longer, but in fact, what was included in the public hearing is here. Good. So we want to vote. We can vote for the for the June ninth minutes. Yeah. 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 Just did I get did you get some? Just some here. Did I, did I set them over there? Did I do? I only have one copy. Two for the ninth. I get two for the other one. Oh, okay. Corrections to the uh, June 9th? No one got corrections? I don't think so. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, now we'll see. Roger, you have to abstain. Roger wasn't uh, there, yeah. so he should. And the rest of us can vote. Yeah, I'll yeah. Just five, yeah. Zero, one. yeah. One, two, three, four, five, 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 five zero, one. one. Any public comment? So can I, did you already go over the agenda? Did you add anything to it? Nope. Could I add something? I did. <laughs> it came up on, fr on yep. Friday, um, new business. We have someone who wants to talk about a property on Graves Road, just to, it's a preliminary discussion, right? Okay. So that can go into new business right after the A&R. How's that? So C. Great. If we could make it B and move that B down to C. Okay. We can do that, we'll agree. Green Street or Green Road? Green Street. Street. Yeah. Do we have a vote? No. That's why I was wondering. Oh. I going to say, that's Conway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. So is there anyone here? Um, so no public comment. Pu uh, public hearing uh, regarding, well, I'll read the whole thing to be official. Um, but I just want to first find out, is anybody here? to talk about the uh, solar up at Eagle Brook. All right. So Do we have that sheet, sign up sheet too. We probably should pass yeah. that around. Uh, we have people here. And um, okay. did you, I didn't hear anything about it today, did you? 
is Doug around? Is anybody, does anybody up no, there? No, no, there was no contact. And, you know, we were speaking earlier that the last time I spoke with Wes, um, they were just going to sit on it for a while. Um, Pat made a suggestion that we reach out to them and ask them to either withdraw it or yeah. we can deny it without prejudice so they could come forward at some future date. All right, so let me let me read the thing so we can officially open it, and then we can decide to probably continue. You have, because I didn't have a copy of that, so I couldn't have done that. I'm hoping I have a copy of it. I know I do somewhere. Here it continues. It goes back several. I would like to open the, uh, or I would like to continue the public hearing. It's 708. Um, regarding, and it's at 708 here on um, it's about the Eagle July Bird. 11, so I'm going to read the whole so thing just to make it official. Again? Uh, I mean, do you, you think you should? We're going to open a public hearing. I walk out. Yeah. On a request received from the Allen Chase Foundation, oh, uh, doing business as Eagle Brook School for a site plan review uh, and special permit regarding a proposal to install two ground-mounted solar arrays which will connect the Eagle Brook campus. The combined power generation of the two arrays will approximately be 1,317 kilowatts. Arrays will be installed on the corner of Keats and Jingle Road and off of Rice Ferries, Rice's Ferry Road. The location is zoned uh, residential agriculture. Copies of the site plans and site plan application are available for inspection at the Deerfield Town Hall during regular business hours. This hearing uh, was first on May, uh, we, we did this on May 9th and then again on June 6th and then June 9th and it's been continued to this evening. So again, is there anybody here to speak about this? Seeing none, what do we want to just continue it one more time and, and then ask them before yeah. our next meeting to, to make sure. a decision? Sure. Okay. okay. Continue to next time. Next time. And we're going to meet August first. We might as well do that while we're talking about it. That's the first Monday of. It says here Monday, August first. Thanks. And did you make sure in the minutes that Rachel was? Yes, I'll put that down. She recused herself. Recused herself at seven ten, seven oh eight actually. Rachel. All right. So, all those in favor of continuing this public hearing until our meeting on August first at seven o'clock. Aye. 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 Two four five five zero zero. Do we have the yeah, I asked Doug, and he's going to. He's been in touch with them. I think they just need to. Well, they're waiting to hear from every source, also. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. their, it's not just their decision they're trying to do with the record company. So. I'm back. So, do Rachel's we have, to put, we have to put one one abstention for Rachel or yes. just zero? Would it be five zero zero? No. Well, you weren't here when we voted. Because you weren't here yeah, when we voted. We started that, so I guess she's not in the front. Right. So, I'm going to put five zero zero in. Well, yeah. you recused yourself. So that's all for old business. New business, we have an A&R for Sugarloaf Street. Dylan Corpita. Do we, um, who has the folder? Do we have a folder? Yeah. It's, I saw it. What's that right there? I'm sitting. Oh, yeah. It's right on, right on the desk. Uh, this whole new, this whole new setup's no good because... What's that? Far away. Usually we're all like closer. We can all point at the point at sure. the map together. Why don't you have them just move up then? Okay. Is this being on? Is on? on uh, yes. Keep. Yes. Thank you, Rachel. So we received an A and R, and it looks like it was fee was paid, and it was received on July seventh, and it's. Uh, the proposed change on the plan is to convey parcel A to somebody. DKRE Sugarloaf, that's the entity that owns the property. That's me. All right. What, we don't really talk about who 
about conveying. We talk about creating a, yeah. a new a parcel. What's, what's building number four and six? Four and six is the Primo's building right here in the center of town. Oh, okay. They're right. the same structure, curious. but yeah. they have two addresses they yep. touch. Okay. And, and to your question, Mr. Wade, ultimately, I don't believe there will be a new parcel created. I would attach this new parcel to the deed of the original. It would become one parcel, but because that's a two-step process, filing through the registry right. before you guys, technically, for, the, for right now, I guess it is a parcel, but I don't, it won't be in the end. Right, because you, number of the existing parcels, one, number of new parcels, one, Right. <laughs> so what do we do? Well, there's two. <laughs> You're not going to combine them? I will. But they're not technically combined until it's done, I'm told, with the registry of deeds. So that's where okay. I went back and forth with Doug on that about how to how the application would read. Basically, I'm just looking to expand the parking lot in the back. So you okay, want that's what I was going to be my next question right. is what, the, right. what you were trying to accomplish. Yeah, just so you they're going to combine this. So this line and this I know, but here. I know, but did he? Did you just buy this, Dylan, or did you own it already? Uh, no, it was um, Fisher's Garage, okay. the, the part of their property. Frank yep. is actually here, yeah, and so he and I have been talking about it. And yeah. uh, basically, there's a fence in the back that's on the existing property line, yep. more or less, and we're just going to move it, more or less, to the new property line. That's yep. Southern, southerly. Parcel A. Uh, right. Let's see. I guess yeah. it'd be easterly, east. kind of. It's moving. Nice. Yeah, the road goes to the cemetery. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, at an yeah, angle. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm missing something. This, Everybody seems clear on what we're this, doing, but this, I'm not. This parcel was owned by Fishers. Lot. Okay. And Dylan is buying this piece. Okay. And he doesn't want to create an, another lot, he said. He's going to co combine that with his, his existing piece of property. So that's what he's up to. But so what are we of, doing then? It, I, <laughs> what are we endorsing? We're, I don't get we're, it. we're endorsing, I guess, maybe this property line. I was told I needed it to be signed by the planning board in order to go before the registry, even though technically, based on what I'm doing, you guys wouldn't normally need to opine because I'm not creating a new lot. There is no frontage. That's what I was told. But, but basically, we are creating parcel A in order for you to... To attach it? To attach it. Okay. So, it so that's why attach. they need okay. us to do it. Yeah. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're right. And, and it does and say right there that's not yeah. a building lock, not right. No. So, so we're not, so right now this parcel A does not exist. It's, it's right. It's part of this property. Yes. So, so you're going to so use this right of way to we're get creating that piece of property. That, but he's not that right of way, right? Yeah, but this predates but my today, own building. The I believe we do this that, that was for yeah, Fishers right. to be able Tomorrow, to use the, right. where that right of way this ends. It, there's a gate right now, which they use to drive to do towing. I believe that was the origin of the right-of-way, although I don't know myself. That's why I, I don't need it or won't be using it because that's the shared driveway I have with the day lily that will just go into the back lot that will be my property. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So this is kind of an issue I've had, and I know Dan Warner I've talked to him about it. It's like right. when he does these drawings, you got to tell us what's what's the existing line and what's the one that we're voting on. Right, because it's right now they're all dark lines. They all look well. Like no, that. the heavy black line is the new one. The thin, smaller black line is the old one. There. No, I think there's I think a four thousand square foot, not exact rectangle, but see, see sliver. The, that's the, the line new. coming from Sugarloaf Street going back. It's half the half the width of the of the new the new piece of property line. You know what I mean? Would right. it be helpful for me to come yes. point this out? Okay. Yes. See, this this line is not as wide as the, this new line. Yeah, but that, you're guessing now, Paul. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm saying it's, it's okay. the width is different. So existing four, six Sugarloaf lot um, is this frontage with these two right. structures, and then straight back here right. this finger. Right. Um, the daylily existing is this little inset in here. That's yep. their little sliver. So okay. Fisher's Garage comes back right now and across and up into here. This is all there. Right. So basically, I'm having this portion right here instead of being part of right. theirs, it's going to be part of mine. Their new line will be here. The fence right now more or less goes like this, and we're just going to move it back to this new But But line. this is the existing border. Right. Yes. We're now creating this one. Yes. Right. So by creating this, we're creating a parcel, which then you'll take this one away. I'll attach that to this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But that, that happens sense. later. That doesn't happen. Right. That happens yeah. to the registry, not us. Right. Yeah. Really but I, I think you can see there's a... The, the yeah. line of the new property is the twice as wide as the, the line. On, on this map, it isn't. Oh, it isn't. Okay, no, this is the not. mylar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna on the 
what are the proposed changes that we're going to endorse? It's to create parcel A. Yep. Yes. Not, yep. To, yep. not to convey it because we don't do conveyances. But you're right. We'd have to create it to be. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's the difference. So on this, that would have been. That's when Dan wrote that. He says convey a parcel. That's not what our job is. That's we don't. That's where he's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I just said yeah. we're creating parcel. Yeah. A. Yeah. Creating it. Yeah. As okay. As okay. It. Any other questions? I'm good. All I'm those good. in favor of endorsing? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Excellent. Weehaw, sign away. Six, okay. six, zero, zero. Six, six, zero, zero. Oh, it's six, 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 <laughs> Who seconded it? I did. Okay, Rachel. Okay. All right. Do you have the the two pages, Rachel, of the of the of the application? Or just the I just have it's the, the it's that it's attached to the. the, to the, uh, the I know, but there's no page two. I don't have page two now. But it just says at the bottom, that's if we can Number five, what, what are the proposed changes to the no, plan? No, I know, but this, this is a two-page application. Yeah, no, uh, I don't have I believe, Oh, I see. I believe Doug had mentioned that Dan may have used an older version of the it's thing not or not. something. I don't know. That's it? Go ahead. That was yeah. what I got and it filled out. And There's usually something I sign on the back that says we endorsed it. So that's all I right. All right, I'll follow up with him. Okay. Yep. Okay. Need to run around more. I didn't sign the other one, but I think we've got enough people to sign it, so we're okay. And who who um who, who made the motion to continue to next month? Kip did. Kip. And who seconded it? Oh, John did it. Can John wait? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I I can sign that one. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Those are four signatures. I didn't get that one yet. You can take one. You can take that mylar and bring it to town clerk, I think. Yeah. And, uh, I don't think it takes the registered deeds. Yeah. Town clerk? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you didn't do a lot of copies, so we'll keep those two. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And you take it to the registry of deeds, they don't even take them anymore. They just, nope. you know, they scan them and give it right back to you. And, and if they do that, why do you have to have them? Why that's, yeah. but the old days, that's what they used for reproduction. Yeah. But now they scan it, so. Planning office and, and um, building inspector. Yeah, we used to have six, but no one ever did anything with them. So. Cutting down on the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dylan. Yep. So, Phil Bless called me and asked if he could talk to us about a, a project you've got. You want to come on up to the table there and tell us about it and um, as I said this is a preliminary we didn't receive anything ahead of time right, right. so Thank you. yeah so you guys want to introduce yeah. yourselves and uh, I'm Richard Fitzgerald my wife Laurel and hey. the property is property her and her brother inherited a few years ago and we want to sell the property there's minimum building lot and a house with more land the minimum building lot on the map is 59 the land is 60 it's on grave street oh so it's a huge lot to the back right correct right. so yeah. um i've had discussions with dick kalashevsky um if you're confused about the last one this one's gonna confuse you a little bit more so lot 59 was Laurelin's grandmother's. There's separate ownership. It's been a separate lot. The, the town's assessing it as a building lot, has been assessing it for 
75, $85,000. Lot 60 is a duplex. That was her parents that her and her brother have inherited. They'd like to sell that to the daughter. To the who? Her daughter. Her daughter. Her daughter, okay. Yep. Laura would like to sell to her daughter. Mm -hmm. um, her daughter can only afford so much. So what we were hoping to do was to be able to um, sell off the back land of lot 60 to a neighboring farmer. So the back of 60 is a farm field currently used. And so the goal is to sell that to a farmer. We would like to do a line from the back corner of 59, the northeast corner of 59, at an angle towards the side boundary. I understand that it needs to be 15,000 square feet minimum lot for a two family. Is that what it says? <laughs> I mean, we can go double check, but it's yeah, in our. We went back and forth. Dick had thought it was 12,000. When I looked at the bylaws, it looked like 15,000. Um, we'll, we'll make sure we got that right. Yeah. <laughs> but why we're here is that your current bylaws require 125 feet of frontage for a duplex. Okay, right. And this has 80 something. So it's non conforming at the present time. And if we create, if we lop off the front of it, are we making it more non conforming? Or, I mean, we're just, we're altering a non conforming lot so that creates certain issues. Right. So, so this, this is uh, CVRD. And, and what is the what's the lot size for CVRD? I think the frontage is 100 foot. Well, he says 125 for, for a duplex. Right, 100 for, a 100 for a single. But I'm just wondering what the square footage has oh, to I be. Oh, I see. There's footnotes, and then you got to go to the footnotes. Right. So that's where you get it. Yeah. So increased by 25 percent for two family dwelling, 50 right. percent for multi. So you're talking two, so 25 percent of of 100. Okay. Right. So that's why I think that it's 12,000 minimum for a single. And the math, I think, makes it 15 for a duplex? 25%. Okay, so 25% more is what you're saying. 16. 16. 20, a fifth of 12 is 3 times oh, 3 more than... Sorry, 25% of... A fourth 12 of, is 3, all right. No, a fourth yeah, of 12, I guess it depends. A fourth of yeah. 12 is 3, so yeah, 15. Okay, it's not a fourth of 16, okay. Right, yep. All right. So what's the square footage? 12,000 is the uh, square footage, so then it'll be for a single thousand for a double. Okay, yeah, that's right. what I was going to say. So that increases also by... Yeah, the same 25%. Yeah. That's what the right. footnote says. Yeah. So... And how big is it now? What's well, it's 4.4 acres. The, the lot is... Well, lot 60 years. is. Yeah. Lot 60 is 4.4 acres. We're not looking to alter 59. You know, that's a... Oh, okay. Lot 59 is a grandfathered standalone lot. Okay. I'm just so you don't want to mess throwing it out there that, you know, that's there also. Um, the goal here is to make so, uh, 60 smaller to drop the price to the daughter. Mm -hmm. And, and then sell, sell it to a farmer, yeah. Sell the back land. But I understand we have to sell it to an abutting farmer or an abutter. We cannot create a landlocked parcel. Right. To right. So we I've been through that with Dick. <laughs> well, no, the town can't. no we, we actually just created a landmark parcel tonight. I saw that. <laughs> so I'm not sure you can't, no, you can't it do it, but it can't be a building lot. But it's attached to a neighbor. It's, 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 on, it's on the same. The, no, the, it's the same thing. He's, that's well, what I'm saying. That, no, I think that's what they're saying. The, you, cre you created a lot that the abutter is acquiring. Right. That's, okay. that's what that's right away in. But so it'll be the same thing here. We're going to have to create it before we can technically sell it. Right. But the sale will be to an abutter. Right. So. Because no one else could get to it. Right. right. Well, so you, we're here to get a sense of whether this is objectionable or not before we spend the money on a survey. Well, Dick Kalashevsky just... suggested that we have this conversation with you before just doing a survey and then coming and asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm just wondering what happens with your frontage once you're re redoing the lot. Did he say what he thought about that? The house lot would not have the frontage for a duplex or a two family, which it is, but you would have the total square foot for the lot. We're not going to put frontage to the back lot. No, no, but, right, right. but if, you, if you're changing this lot, um, is it still going to have a duplex on it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, existing it's an existing, already. It's an it's, existing it's duplex that's been there. Right, right. 
but we we can we endorse lack of frontage though that's our that's my question we're, we're not we're not we're not endorsing the lack of frontage it doesn't have it already if he was going to change the frontage there might be an issue but he's not changing the frontage that's mm -hmm. going to stay the same all he's doing is changing the square footage and they're going to allow enough square footage to meet meet the 15 15,000 square feet yeah. so yeah. right so and then the frontage would be grandfathered. Yeah. So personally, okay. I don't think there's an issue. But no, that's, that's, not, that's, about, that's all I was asking. Right. Yeah. Now you know all this is contingent on the farmer you know, finding a butter buying that back piece, which yeah. is our next step. You know, we're trying to do this one at a time to figure out what we can do here, all with the goal to sell the duplex to the daughter. Right. So I think the question why Dick asked you to come here is because whenever we do. Look at any kind of rezoning. We we could say, oh, you got to meet all the new ones, right? Right. I right. think that is right. right. But since our, there's an existing house, I know you know not, it, it doesn't. Yeah, I don't it think it's applicable apply, yeah. unless it somehow really was detrimental no. to the town. I don't think you could make no. that case because no. all all the lots on that street are pretty, pretty tight, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess he's asking us if it came in front of us, would we endorse it? I know. It? So I'm also thinking, does it need a special permit? Does it need anything else? Is it just, well, just an AR? You're creating a lot with, without the proper permits. You're changing all. By changing Once you yeah. change it, you're creating You're creating yeah. a lot. Exactly. Max is right. Yeah. But we did the, basically the same thing to. Well, we just endorsed the Corpetus wasn't the, there wasn't a building lot, so it was this it was isn't no, a building lot. Well, well, no, we're, we're, yeah, it is. where we're the duplex not. is, we're, we're basically recreating that, that lot where the duplex that, is. I mean, that's the yeah, yeah. that's the awkward part. Maybe I guess you can look at it that way, but I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure I mean, it's I, I don't, sent I, it to I, us. Altering the existing I, building I, lot. I, I hear what you're saying, Roger, and I agree with what you're saying, but I'm just saying, are we technically, you know. Endorsing a smaller frontage on it. By We're not endorsing a smaller it's frontage. There. It's there already. It exists. Actually, you're creating the, the back. That's the new lot. The front right. lot is the same. Right. right. That's a way to look. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I guess that's how you. I would, yeah. yeah. Like if we're if he wanted to take some of the square footage uh, frontage off of it, I'd say yes. We that's couldn't do it. Thing. Right. Yeah. But he isn't. Right. Because okay. we did look at that. Yeah. To allow access to the farm. And some kind of right away. Yeah, we realize that's not that's not, not going to happen. That's and really then, not an option. you know, Dick's comment was, well, you know, it is a right to farm town, so you sell it to a farmer. I mean, how how could you object to that? Right. So, I will say that here's the thing, and this is kind of apropos of what Max is saying that when there are two ways of looking at this, and one is saying it's like Corpetus property issue, where you're saying we're selling off the back lot to a farmer. That I can. That's easy to get behind. Right. See that? And so it's interesting. This is really, whereas if you're also then talking about a grandfathered piece of property, we don't want to go around town letting, you know, grandfathered property is, is non-conforming because it conformed to another right. standard. Or didn't conform to any standard. Or whatever. Yeah. But it, yeah, there or, was, no it was created back. before yeah, there were standards. What, you know what I mean? Yeah. In yeah. other words, it was, it was created by a different set of rules, whatever, non-rules. Yeah. And so when we come in and we say, oh, well, no, there are rules now. We are making it a lot, but essentially. Um, uh, do you own 59? But it is, there is that. Different that owners, is a, th those different are two owners. different ways of looking yeah. at the no. same problem. Yeah. And I, I Max, stick with one thing. But that, that, I think that that's, that's, the, that's the discomfort. And I, I don't think that, I think that if we look at it as we are um, allowing a, a, a homeowner who happens to have a non conforming you know, two, parent, two family house to to um, sell off some of their property to a farmer that would otherwise be landlocked has no other benefit to the town mm -hmm. in any other way then that would that would feel more comfortable to me than mm -hmm. than actually coming at it by saying we want to make it do you see, do you see mm -hmm. um, yeah. but the the issue with that is that once we make all we do is endorse know, the line yeah they can sell it to whoever they want even though they tell you know that's that's so, but they so can't you, because well, they're not it's asking not us go to anywhere. endorse it right now. They're, I think they're yeah, looking yeah. to get the. But I'm just saying, there's yeah, only yeah, so yeah, many yeah. things that we can. Well, do. that's what would make it more like Dylan's. Right. Yeah. yeah, that was but that they, would make it more like. Right, John, they could sell it to anybody they want, yeah. but whoever's going to buy it would want access. To exactly. It, so. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So it has to be a neighbor. You know, you know, either have to come up with a way of getting access to the property or sell it to somebody that has access. Already has access. Right. 
And I think I think one of our major interests here when we're when we're doing something like this is that we there has to be frontage to the to the lot if we're going to approve any lot. Wow. And so if it's tied to another lot with frontage, then it's I believe that's this. There's two things. One is access, and one is frontage. And anything else, we you know, um, yeah. those are the two of the main things that we have to do as a planning board. I don't think you need frontage to create a. Lot I'm not here. saying you do here, Roger. I, I'm but, saying anywhere, John, uh, Paul. You, whoever's going to buy it, would want right a right away or some some means of access to that piece of property. It doesn't have to have frontage. I don't believe. Could I just take a pause? We have a, someone who might be able to help us too. So, Pat, have you? I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but did, did you get? You were you saw the emails about this, so could you weigh in and give us? I a have to admit, I wasn't sure on the emails exactly what was uh, uh, going on about this either. So, um, I just happened to open up the zoning here to your section twenty two fifty four. This is in regards to non conforming single and two family residential structures. So um, it says that non-conforming single and two-family residential structures may be reconstructed, extended, altered, or structurally changed upon a determination by the building inspe inspector that such proposed reconstruction, et cetera, or change does not increase the non-conforming nature of said structure and the issuance of a building permit were applicable. So if the building inspector determined that he thought it would be uh, the nature of structure would be potentially more non-conforming, then it would go to the Board of Appeals who could allow that by a special permit. So that would be the process. If the building inspector felt that it didn't work, then mm -hmm. you could go to the ZBA. That also sounds like it's if, if there's nothing on the lot. Well, that no, this is this is talking, it's it's, it sounds like it's talking about the building An itself, like if you're building. adding a porch on it, so it's it not as directly okay. relatable to the change in the lot. So okay. that was, and that's a, that's a little bit of a, okay. a an issue with it. Um, it is true when you're signing a and R plants that you need, as Paul said, to confirm that there is adequate frontage and adequacy across that. Those are those are the only two things that, that we have to do. Frontage. Uh, we have to have yeah. frontage and access. Those are the only two things. I You're not ever saying that it's a building permit. Yeah. That's yeah. A sub, as you pointed out. That's a subsequent that decision, and all of the plans always have a stamp that you're not. But I'm not saying I'm not saying that I'm going to say, hey, he's got to have 125 feet. I'm just saying that. Any lot that we create, if it has no frontage, I don't think we can create it unless I, somebody I comes in and says, I'm going to attach I it to it. You can, we can create a lot that has no frontage. You just did? Well, we did, well, but, we that, did, but, but it's to given to somebody <laughs> no, that had frontage. It was it, being created for the person it, purchasing yeah. it. So if it, you brought the farmer in and he said, I want to buy this piece from these people. That's what I'm saying. And I have this lot and I want to attach it to my lot. Exactly. Then... That feels that would be, I think what I was saying that in relation to is is that if the two parties that dealt with it, Corpita and Fishers, and if Kip, you came in and said, I'm going to buy that parcel of property, I don't think that could be done because you don't have any way to get to that property. And why would what, I buy it? That's, that's no, why. but that's why Corpita can buy it because it, it attaches to his property when they're budding. I, it's a budding issue. It's yeah, a budding, budding issue. It's, it's, like not, it's not a third grant, party. You grant it right away over the existing property the front the frontage that's there but then you have to, that's a whole other process so i guess what i would say is maybe what you're doing is creating the new lot on that existing frontage that think of that perhaps yeah. as the lot that you're creating the smaller residential lot that is already non-conforming as right. to the frontage that's what we're saying and as long as you're leaving enough uh, the lot size there to meet the, right. the dimensional requirements, then you are not creating any additional nonconformity right. other than you now right. have this big out lot back here. Yeah, right. but it still belongs to the person that owns the front lot, so that right. doesn't matter. You can separate so two lots. So I think lots if you look at it that way, the same it ownership, makes more but sense. You can't, you can't go to a third party, I don't believe. I agree that we're not making it more, the, the one that's on the road with the frontage now, it's less than it should, but it's, we're not creating more. It won't be more non it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll be no more, no more non That's where we're keeping the 15 that's as long as it's yep. 15 yeah. dollars. And how are you going to draw that line, rectangular lot or an angle, you said? It's, I think it's going to have to be an angle to get the 15,000 feet. I haven't done the Because the other ones yet. aren't, the ones along that road. Well, I th like 12. I said, I th if you draw the line straight across from 59 over to 61, I don't think that's going to be enough for 15,000, but I okay. haven't done that math yet. Uh -huh. But even look at mm -hmm. 61 and 62 are further back, so yeah. it might be more like that. So if you yeah. just squared off the lot there... That's one. I mean, yeah. we'll talk to a surveyor. But that's, that's, your, that's your business. Are 61 yeah. and 62 also duplex? I mean, no. Single. Homes. Single family. Single family homes. Yeah. I mean, no. 
Awesome. He's so brave to read it on. You know where my fields live? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right across the road from my fields. fields. Um, so, that, that, that line will partly be determined by what the farmer wants, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Okay. I mean, the easiest thing is just to do a straight angle, one line. But if there's a valuable little corner in there, we might have to alter a little bit something. Yeah. My, um, my our goal like, is to bring the farmer in. Absolutely. <laughs> me, personally, I don't think I would object to what you want to do if that's your, just your question today. Yeah. I'd get, I'd get your ducks in a row, though, so that... Well, Paul, I think... Yeah, yeah, that's just me personally. Exactly. That's what I, I yeah. think. He no, really, fine. he really cares what we think more than what one of us. Thinks. No, no, I know. But I think he's coming to us not for a decision, but for an opinion. Right. Correct. And that's why. That's why exactly. I'm just saying that. There's nothing to make a decision on. I know that. So it sounds like if you're in the right, and Dick didn't give you a he, he didn't say he'd have a problem with it as far as a. Uh, he thought it was a no-brainer. What does it say there that he? I mean, he doesn't. This doesn't need a building permit. So not why yet, do you even? No. Go yeah. to him. Excellent. So he could have, he could determine that it didn't increase the nonconformity in initial building permit, but that's not what they're going for. So yeah. that, but, that's but, why it kicked but it out. But when they do something here, if they make it more more nonconforming, and he wants to put a porch or something, right? In that then house, it would make it. Hurt. Then it's going to make a difference at that right. point. Right. And they might need then to go to the ZBA for right. a special right. permit. If right. they want to. Mm -hmm. But that would be the daughter. So you don't see this needing any kind of other special permit? I, I, just I, from the description of it. I know. All right. So you're making a new lot. So it's mm -hmm. an AR. All right. Get in before the new uh, <laughs> zoning, or is it better to get in before the new zoning goes into effect or not in Massachusetts? It doesn't matter. Uh, I don't think it matters. doesn't matter. I don't know that that's going to be close enough to. Uh, yeah. That's a, that's a year off at least, isn't it? Well, there, there is a version that's under conference. But I don't know if it's actually going yeah. to go. When it'll we take don't effect. Know. And when it'll take and, effect. Yeah, and then when you know subsequent changes would be, you know, right now you're being ruled by the existing bylaws here, and it would take some time for them to be altered to accommodate any changes yeah. at the state level. So, yeah. Dick encouraged me to come before you to have this discussion before just going and surveying it. Yeah. He didn't want us to spend money on the survey yeah. if you had objections to this. So, and we appreciate that because sometimes things do come up. And I've had my wrist slapped in the past for not going to the building inspector first for any of these things because, you know what I mean, you've, got, you've you got your own building inspector, but a lot of the hill towns right. know, they share and uh, the boards. You know, whatever. So yeah, so we you heard that we seem to be uh, we seem to be pretty okay with this. Okay. Just so. here. And, and what was your name again, sir? Phil, Phil. Pless. Phil Pless. Oh, you are real estate. Okay. Mm -hmm. with Rachel's mom years ago. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have an extra copy yep. of that? Can you, um, um, I gave them all my yeah, you can have, you can have this. I'll grab one. 20, what was the thing you were just reading? 20, 22? Um, Non-conforming, 2254? I think that was it. Non-conforming single and two-family residential. So we'll make sure we pull that back out when we yeah. get this. So we're actually looking at the facts. Okay. If you'd like to do once in a while. We like to look at the facts, do we? Occasionally. <laughs> okay. We're set. Thank We're you so good. much. Thank Thanks you. Your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah. No, oh, I should keep this open. Um, I know. That's us. <laughs> Jam it around. So we have a uh, new business discussion of subdivision bylaw. Did one of our members here? I should put that on the agenda. Not me. Not me. Oh. <laughs> you can get blamed. You can blame yeah, for everything, just Kim. <laughs> blame it on Kim. Did this come from from uh, from Dad? Dick Dick Kalashevsky? Yeah. I mean, I did it come I from you, Pat? It did not come from me. Well, so we have but no information. But it might have come from uh, Doug because I had been invited to a preliminary meeting. Um, last month of a potential subdivision application. Oh, yes. I so it, it came up in the course of that discussion that, you know, your subdivision rigs are pretty old. They had the last date on here is September 2005. And so I guess there was That's some... not that old. <laughs> no. Wow. A lot of them not as old as me, so it's <laughs> spring chicken. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, I assumed that maybe he had put it on as a result just to take a look at it. There's a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of towns are making changes in their subdivision regulations to um, make better accommodation for low-impact development. Is it in our book? It's in your book. 
I don't. I, you'd have to look at the table of contents to see what it is. But it's. I believe it's in there. I think it's in there. If not, we'll get you a copy okay. of it. Okay. Well, wouldn't it be prudent to wait until we see what the state yeah. hands down before we start, start reworking something to have to do it again? Yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's something that would take some time to, yeah. to go through and, and revise. I mean, typically, what people are doing is, as I say, providing requirements for low impact development and maybe restricting the, the a lot of old subdivision regs that around the county require broader streets and is considered necessary for today's you know attempt to restrict the amount of asphalt and impervious surface but people can't do less because it's required in the subject so that's one of the things that has made a bunch of people look at just to try to make it more simpler and flexible to do smaller types of Smaller uh, developments and Smaller to do things that aren't as pipe and pond in regard to the sewers and stormwater and so forth. So that's what a lot is of people. Is there some? Uh, also some issue of easy. making smaller lots? Or so I mean, this was something that the lot size is set the zoning, but this is so. So okay. the subdivision of land really is about the infrastructure, infrastructure and the roads and your requirements it. for that. That's that's what this sets up. So that's certainly something that you guys might decide to look at at some point in the future. But as Kip says, maybe maybe more focused on a specific need rather than just starting in because you know no, no, it's like, a lot of work. Depends on what the state comes out with too, because if we start working on something, then they they change. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know if they're actually looking at the chapter eighty one on the subdivision now. If that's part of the zoning reform, there are some things in the zoning reform that I think would have some impact on. I think there are some elements of it, but I haven't studied it closely enough to know. So mm -hmm. it, may, it may make sense to wait. So this was in. So there was a meeting with Mr. Reitman. This was in reference to a, a potential yes. project. Right. I'm not sure the extent to which I'm at liberty to divulge the details. All right, I got an email, so to, as far as I'm, you know, I have to speaking dis to disclose that. But um, yeah, who is it and what is it? Um, so someone approached Dick at the building inspector, and they said it's a it's a potentially sizable development, and they wanted to get zoning board and planning board. the planning board and building inspector and the admin just to see what all the different procedures are because if it's going to need a site plan and that's this you know that they wanted to make sure we were kind of coordinated um i could not i was away that week i think i sent it out i think i sent it out to everybody to see if anybody could represent the planning board i did so. i sent it to at least paul and kip because that's who i keep but then pat could I go was the, yeah i was the only one yeah. as a representative of the planning board who was able to be there so we might see it at the next at a meeting. In yeah, the at that point future? in time, there was a plan to come up with it by the end of the summer, but I don't know if there have right. been subsequent. There may have been some uh, developments. That might so I think it might have been put on the agenda because in case it was further along or something. So. All right, great. So, it, uh, so uh, since I don't know where it is in my book, I will I would double be a check. Good thing to I'll review. double check when I get back to the office this week. Okay. And um, if it's not, I'll bring you copies to okay. put in your book for the next meeting. What's okay. that, the subdivision bylaw? Yeah. yeah. It's got to be in it. I know. Well, you know, we focus so much was, on zoning, and we've never was, done any subdivision. Uh, uh, it's possible that we overlooked Chapter 264? It. Yeah. Subdivision of land, right there, there. chapter 13. Okay. 13. Tab 13. That makes me feel There better. it is. I knew I brought this for a reason. <laughs> My bed's flopping around. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, good. I didn't, you know, I saw yeah. that on the agenda, but as we yeah. are sort of in between contracts right now, I didn't take any extra time to look at it until such time as you had directed me that you wanted to undertake that effort. Well, generally, we get money from somewhere when we try to do that kind of a thing. Right, and that's what we, you know, and that's the, that's where the rub would come on that. You know what I mean? There it is. No. We got that. we got all that money to to look at the the property on five and ten up here, you know, in the C the C one C two district and the all that, and we we spent a lot of time on that. And, and that's we if got, we wanted to make a that's change. Out of your to that's, right. that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You so guys we usually try to find some money somewhere to cover it rather right. than trying to do it out of our budget. That one came out of your budget. That review. So actually, that yeah. can bring us to another. Item on the agenda that's not on the agenda that I would like to put on the agenda. Okay. Is the FERCOG contract? Yes. I thought we had that on. We have. On that's I, under I, new I, business, so we'll make I guess that I should have pointed that out, and I didn't. Yeah. Um, I I so had sent D, you guys right? an invoice for the final quarter of um, FY16, 
and a draft contract for FY17. So I have copies of those I can pass out to you. doing that we just reorganized and kind of cleaned it up a little bit. So page four, what was is billable what what was included the Eagle Book Solar Peer Review. You're on the invoice? Yeah, that's not yeah. that's not part of the other invoice. One so the, what we do now in terms of the task schedule here is this is actually recorded on uh, staff timesheets by each one of these individual tasks. So is this is this the billing? This is the billing, yeah. So okay. we're looking at the yeah, final just billing. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Task we're looking at the billing. tracking okay. sheet. Pat, excuse me. You sorry. have two of the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. So we get we get these billing sheets quarterly. Okay. I think we often bring it here. Sometimes I think sometimes maybe I just approve it for them. But the new thing is that page four, which is the, the billing for a specific uh, that we agreed to several months ago, that we would also hire a person page to do right. four. peer review. Oh, I see. The first, the first one is two pages, then three. Yeah, four. and okay, then, there, gotcha. then there's single pages after that. Just yeah. the copier did it. Um, so typically I would have just had the task hour breakouts there, but then so when we on the, e the second task, the Eagle Book Solar Peer Review, we went ahead and did the calculation with the exact hourly rate and overhead to show you the dollar amount then for that review. So in this case, um, the 36 hours and a half that were spent on it totaled $2,248.04. The estimate had been $3,000. So if as is anticipated, according to the statements made by the Eagle Book representatives at the last meeting, they withdraw this application, then that difference would be remandable to the applicant. And I note in the letter that that amount that would be able to be refunded to them is $751.96, plus any interest. But nowadays, interest Can't is be much negligible. Interest. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but so that would, so um, if, however, it were to proceed and there were more work on it, then that would be different. But as of that meeting last month, I've, since then I've done no more work on that project. Okay. According to the, the chair, told me full stop, and that's what we did, because there's nothing more to do at that point in time. You will see some additional billing admin time associated with this because we had to make all of these changes. We had internal reviews on the utilization of the peer review process. We had um, different staff working on the contract updates and the invoices and developing the new timesheet format and all of that. So, but the good news is that initial work is done. So as we proceed in the future, those are all in place. And so that's kind of a one-time charge to get it set up. Mm -hmm. So now do I understand that we have to vote on this tonight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So on the um, the April to June statement, that's for all of the work combined, correct? Yes. yes. And the the budget last time was fifteen thousand. Why do I think I remember? It was ten thousand, and then we executed a budget amendment to allow for the peer review to occur because we wouldn't have been able to have done even the three thousand dollars under the existing contract because we were too close to the ten thousand. Yeah. So the contract then was executed for a five thousand dollar additional budget, three thousand anticipated for the Eagle Book review, and two thousand for anything else that you guys might have wanted me to do before the end of the year. Um, 
So the, maybe just went over this, but is so is all of this on this invoice associated with the Eagle Brook? No, you look no. at that task schedule, and you, so you can see that um, the 36 and a half hours were the actual peer review. Yep. Then there were six and a half hours that were administrative, you know, like relating to contracts and agendas and so forth that that were attached to Eagle Brook, but not necessarily billable to the applicant because they were right. your administrative work for the town, not this distinct review of the proposal Project. itself. And then um, we had some admin support, like where I admit came out for that uh, preliminary review. That time shows in here. So that's not specifically related to a an existing proposal, but it's not just straight admin either. It was a you know a project related task, and then the billing admin is just the straight time on creating the documents and filling out the forms and getting the financial records together. So that in June, the fifteen hours that for billing and admin seems high. Well, as I explained, that's because of all of the work we had to do to make all these changes to accommodate the peer review going forward. But those now, those changes are now made. They're in place. The, the timesheets set. So, if you know who, this task sheet's in place, so we can just change it for the next peer review. We just change this from Eagle Brook Solar to whatever the name of that is. There might even be more than one. We could accommodate that as well if there were more than one ongoing. So, what problem would it cause to keep the contract amount at ten thousand dollars and amend it again if? It needs be. Could do that if you wished. I'm just wait. You're you're jumping ahead to the next. Let's He's see, jumping ahead to the contract. Let's let's, then, let's yeah. decide if we want to approve this invoice first. So does everybody understand? So we're going to pay Percog four thousand six hundred seventy thirty one, but we're going to get twenty two forty eight of that back from. You should already have it in the. Well, we have it, but if we have it, then yeah, right. it's in an escrow until we take it, right? right. So yeah. So in in effect, it's, this is really. Twenty-four hundred for. Now, when we increase this contract, though, so so we, go, we can we finish the bill? Everybody okay with the bill? Yeah. Well, I don't. Well, I'm looking at the bill here, and it's talking about. <laughs> I'd like it's to. talking about other stuff than just the bottom line here. It's talking about stuff in here, and I just wanted some clarification in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Is that I think we asked for seventy-five hundred dollars or eight thousand for a budget, and now it's going to be fifteen, even though it was bud, even though it was voted by the town to be. Did, didn't we ask for seventy five hundred to be our budget? Yeah, but no. it, last year we asked for ten, and then we added five to it. But the five was coming from peer review, so we really didn't. We are, are revolving. Them, sorry, coming from our. Oh, this is revolving, not the not the regular fund because we we dropped it from ten. That's all. I I I, I don't get involved at that level. I That's, you guys I remember we had that discussion here about dropping our thing from ten. We down did, to, and this yeah. what we pay the FERCOG can come out of our our annual revolving budget and, and our revolving oh, yeah. and our peer. And right. so, so but what I'm, what I'm getting at is, we're, yeah. uh, what does this fifteen thousand mean that's in here? Then that's what I'm not sure. Of. Okay, no, well, that's just so what we, we need to do is just decide that we can pay this. That ultimately this is um, yeah. As far as we can see, it's a forty six hundred forty six forty six hundred seventy dollars thirty one cents. We need cents. to approve that. Okay, we can approve uh, knowing that. Knowing that at this point we own twenty four um, two thousand four hundred twenty two. We'll come no, back the, from no the opposite. I mean, more or less, it's twenty two um, two thousand two hundred forty eight. Um, we'll come back from the applicant. So well, that no, means they've already given it to us. Right, 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 right. But in other words, so of that, that comes draws off of our budget. Is mm -hmm. the yeah. twenty four two thousand four hundred twenty two dollars and twenty seven cents. So just knowing that, I think that's yep. what we need to be able to say right. yes. We're and then say yes to that, and that's a. That fifteen thousand shows on the first page of the the invoice because the that, as the current approved budget because that was what had been voted in that right. contract extension. Right. As there, there's a footnote to that effect. There. Okay, but that, that's the part I want to talk about. But if we do, if we got to vote on the forty six. Let's do it and then go back to the other. That's what I think. Yes. Yeah. All right. All those in favor of? Uh, well, I, I move that we, do we have to move? No, you can move. I'll yeah. move it. Thanks. I move that we pay this bill. All those in favor. Second, second, did it. Let me let me get this yeah. here. For contract, pay uh, forty six seventy thirty one. Moved by who? Rachel. 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 Seconded by you. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, I've got those, you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Six Abstain. zero zero. Yeah, and and you know this is something I should check with um, other people because I think there's been several bills that, as chair, I've I've authorized payment on. I'm not sure we always vote on it. Always vote on it. We should probably be more consistent because, yeah. as you said, it, it's a little bit after the fact. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's when we ask Pat to do some work, we're basically saying we're sure. going to pay you for it. Right. You know? Right. And and. Then it's up to us to say stop. Or something. Well, oh, this, this is, is the way we know how much all that work costs. I mean, I, I think that's so it's the good only to thing. review. Well, that's that's it, okay. It, it, I don't have a problem with that. It's good to review it, but I don't want to have to have it approved every time. You know, because what if two people say I don't like this? So, like, what are we going to do? Yeah. Because it's work we've already commissioned. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So maybe we don't. So your point is, we don't necessarily have to vote to do it. It becomes more of an ad, admin function. Yeah. Right. right, right but right, right. my my question is, so that that oh. is this well, is this go. bullet number four on this first page of the bill? that says $15,000 contract. Is that a compilation I'm of different sorry, accounts? I'm sorry, where? On the you're very you're first in the actual new contract. No, 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 I got it, Pat, Pat, I got it. Okay. In the very first page, right. is we, this a compilation of more than one account? Yes. It's, the, it's our annual budget yeah. and our revolving fund and our peer review fund. Which is on page six of this. If you look on this contract, it says. But that. He's talking about this past year. That's, I just don't, this, this okay. other uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to get it straight okay. because but normally I would think you would account for each same. each account each line item no, differently. But the FERCA doesn't care it. where it's coming from. That's our business where it comes from. They just have a fifteen thousand dollar contract. We need Doug here, and I'd like to actually postpone any more detail about this to okay. get our administrator right. here because he's got the breakdown along with our, our uh, accountant at, at the town yep. hall. That's what we care about. But as far as FERCA. Well, I don't care that they get their money. What, you know, I care they get your money, but I'm just saying that when I'm looking at this here and I'm trying to relate it to our budget, right. I don't see the relationship at all. So that's our responsibility, yeah. okay. and I'll ask, I'll ask okay. to break, all right. break that down. For the next I'm step. always happy to come before and answer any questions, and we've worked to expand the way the information is provided to you so that you will then have what you need to make those determinations as to the but pots you, of money. But, that, but, I, but that's, that that's up to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so now we want to look at, for this fiscal year, start, which started last, you know, on July 1st, July 1st 2016, yeah. um, that we want to engage the, the FERCOG in a similar way we have the past couple of years. So as I said, we did make changes here to accommodate the 4453G peer review. So you can see that in, you know, payments to the consultant under Article 5, for example. Um, and then um, we also added a non-discrimination clause, which is Article 12. And what we did, the scope of services you'll see now are longer than they did before because on the advice of our procurement officer, we moved all of the text that had been elsewhere relating to scope into this one location so that it's all in one place. We added a task two, which is to continue to provide peer review technical assistance on projects as assigned. We added uh, task three to allow for subdivision proposal review because that had not been identified before. I'm thinking that that might come forward this year. So that is also new there. I mean, we keep discussing this and it keeps raising the questions in my mind is that we. We have a guy come in and he gives us three thousand dollars for peer review. That's basically put in an account somewhere separate from our Correct. from our uh, either either our revolving account or our budget account. Correct. And it's kept separately. And so I'm trying to I'm trying to reconcile that with saying we're you're going to we're going to uh, give you a contract for fifteen thousand dollars. To my way of thinking, that number should be the amount of our budget that we're paying for you to do. It's enough and then to in figure. Well, number just let me finish it. And then in addition to that, as things come up unexpected, there's special accounts set up that you bid on and the, and the, the person pays you no. through us. No, because we no. would have to, we need, that has to be under some kind of contract with the towns. We would either have to separately contract for each of those peer reviews, which when we did the legal right. review in-house, um, my superiors did not want to do that. They wanted it under the existing sure. contract, so the other protections that are inherent in this contract also apply. 
Well, when we first when we first talked about this, I thought it was set up that each one had to be a separate account. And yes, it had to that's, be held that's there. your accounting on your end. That has nothing to do with okay. us. How right. I will send you a letter. So anytime you ask for us to do a peer review, we will send you a letter outlining what we estimate, you know, what the tasks are and what we estimate it will cost. So you'll have that, and then that's asked of the applicant that's put in that account, and that's what was done in this case. And that's why I, I did the accounting so that you could see how much money was not expended so that that could be duly returned as per the statute to the applicant. And to, to help you mm -hmm. understand this, let's just say we have a contract with the FACOG for $10,000. Then a project comes up and the peer review is going to be $10,000. We have to do an amendment to up theirs to twenty. And then two months later, we get another big job. We have to make the amendment. Another one to do so it we there. could go all the way up. So at the end of the year, it would say our contract fund was 60000 although the taxpayers didn't pay that because right. it was all coming from the applicant. Yeah, it was an in-out kind but of thing. But that's where that larger yeah. number okay. comes from. Comes. And, all right. Well, that's, that's different than we originally had done. Kind of no, well, no, because worse, it's the same. It's just the, where's the money coming from? You just got to yeah. understand yeah. that the money I, comes I, from I these years. I think I understand what and as you had suggested before, if you wanted to, we could go back to ten thousand and do an amendment later if that you know was preferable it's, it's to the town. It's, to, just, it's, it's just an administrative, not, you know, kind of a hassle, and it has it says up to. Right. So it's not like you're committing to spending the whole thing, but I leave it to your discretion to determine in discussions amongst yourselves. I, and it's really the board of selectmen that signs this, so you will have that. Yeah. I, my only thing that I was thinking about is that. If that number is up there, fifteen thousand, and then it's like, well, you know, you got this room, this much money left in your budget, so you can do this, and that's where I think if the, the number is smaller, it would kind of keep that into. Not that we wouldn't do it, but at least the you know you wouldn't have that mentality of just you know, well, there's extra money there, so well, we could do to, it. To my that. way of thinking, can, can I just can I, Paul, can I Paul? Can I respond? You've been saying a lot. Of okay, good. And I think, again, the contract with the FERCOG is totally separate from the planning board budget. And our revolving fund. I understand it. And so I think your point is it's 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 our responsibility Correct. to make sure we only hire them when we really need them. Exactly. exactly. And I love this because I think, and I've said this many occasions, that as a volunteer board, we only have so much time and we only have so much expertise. And so it's great to have an organization like this that, that has that. And but I do think you're right that we should not just say, oh, go off and do lots of work, that we should say, okay. Do this work. This is what we need for next month or the next two months. So I, I just want to say that that's our responsibility. It is. And it, there's two full things. One is that we, you know, the, the budget that we get from the town, we need to be responsible for. Right. But also for the applicants, you know, we, we have to, you know, yep. keep their, you know, costs in mind. So. Yep. And make sure that we're getting the information, you know, correct, correct information. Yeah. Well, what it, what it sounded like to me is like it's another revolving fund rather than Mick no. mucking it in with our. No, our it's budget. it's just it's just a reflection of. Okay, that's right. I'm not going to put in to kill the point. But any other questions on the contract? Is there any way to, like, the admin support billing and admin, because putting it on the job? Because I know if I filled out my timesheet like this, I'd get all kinds of phone calls. It, you have to well, assign it to a know, job. Well, you know, for example, if I help review uh, an agenda. And there's three items on the agenda, you know, yeah. then I'd have to separate it out by three. And then there may not be an existing task for one of those items on the agenda. So, and then you'll be paying me for yet more administrative time to divide things up even, you know, more finely. And I could certainly keep more well, detailed just, records if you guys wish. Not, you know, I can say, I can say each, like, this is a call from the building commissioner. This is a call from the town administrator. This is a call from the town clerk, you know, but each Every piece of the additional detail, you know, I'm just curious, do you charge time. us for coming here to do these contracts too? Like tonight? Yeah. Are you yes. on the clock? Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's part I'm, of it. Yeah. This, is, this is my. Um, yeah. This is penance for being. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm here in the absence of a contract to assist in any way. So this is, this is my good faith presentation here today. Yeah. Well, time um, will be added later. But it will be built. It. Well, no, but yeah. ultimately she, a contract she, would be built for my presence. She is on the yes. clock when she's yeah. she's yeah. getting paid when she's yeah. here. Which yeah. is, that's that's the job. Yeah. So our job is to ask the uh, select board to sign this. I think really we're not. Uh, yes, yeah, so it is signed by the select board. Right. So they have a motion to. Um, I think we already voted to pay it. 
No, now no, we're talking about this the next is year's the more contract. Important one. Oh, oh, the second. Okay, the second thing. All right. Huh? This we actually do need to vote on. This we actually need to vote on. So I would entertain a motion that the planning board uh, request that the select board approve this contract. Before, do you want to amend the dollar amount or you want to leave it as 15? Well, what is that? I had that one here and now I can't. I like not to exceed 15. That? I know, I, I have. Uh, because you want an amendment costs money. It takes time and it would get billed a couple hundred bucks for it. So, I see. <laughs> you know, if you can look at it that way. So, so this one is what again, uh, John? This, this one here is what again? This is a contract with the FERCOG. Hopefully we're going to keep getting Pat Smith when we want to ask her to do some work with us, whether it's a site plan review okay. work. All right. This is the FY2017 contract. Right. So it's from last week, July 1st, to okay. next June. All right. Yep. For all right. Not to exceed 15, so up to 15,000, but it's all in our discretion. Okay. If we spend 2,000 or 15,000. And Mr. Chairman, you know, we, we now that we're doing estimates ahead and peer review, you know, we could also have more of a discussion when a task is assigned about some estimates of yeah. time and some limits that could mm -hmm. be set. So then we could revisit, you know, so it's not just an open book yeah. at all. Right. Yeah. Um, it, I understand and I agree with what you said about you know, changing, making amendments, but this contract is, um, and I understand that it's up to that amount. I'm just con a little concerned that if we hire her to do things, whether it's zoning regulations or stuff that you know is going to be our expense, not an applicant's. That's where I'd like some sort of limit is not to go to that fifteen thousand. You know, um, and I'm not sure right now how to implement the restraint uh, of limiting that. No. You know, well, our operating budget's only it's 75. 75. 75, right. So, so anything over that, so we comes out of our either revolving loan or. Okay. All yeah. right. So I guess that's kind of a restraint. You, you've been doing this quarterly, I think. You give bills. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So maybe we just have to every three months make sure it's on our agenda because I think we don't look at it sometimes and then eight months go by and it's like, oh, I didn't know. Yeah. So that's the okay. other way we could do it. The other thing I would say in response to that is that if you look at the budget on page six of the attachment, right. um, it has five, just over $5,000 for that task two for peer review. So by definition, that much is put aside for peer reviews in the, you know, in, in, as you're thinking of it at the beginning. So while, it, while it isn't, a, you know, it doesn't That's strictly a, delegate where, where it comes from, it does, it does set that parameter from the beginning that that the, the work for the town would, would come up to you know, 10,000 and that any reviews would be above that. The, the subdivision app application review, is that um, an applicant pays that fee? So that you, might potentially also, well, we'd have to look into, I have to double check, I think 4453G does also apply to subdivision reviews. So if you take the other two, the just a general, uh, Console, the other one, it, it, that adds to 7,500, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you, you say something there adds up to 7,500? Yeah. yeah. Which ones? Number um, one and number, number one four. And number four. Which are the ones that we would never, we couldn't ask an applicant to help. Okay, all right, that's that's good. I like to see that. I like to understand, you know, I mean, we signed a contract for $15,000 and, and the people tell us we can spend 7,500. We. Just need but to like define John it better saying, how we know where it's, it's coming up from. To. It's first yeah, of all, it's right. up to, yeah. and that additional, uh, uh, what is it, sixty-five hundred dollars, seventy? That additional money, the extra seventy-five hundred, would we'd be reimbursed by the applications? Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine as long as we, it's there. And if we have nobody comes with any it's, requests for us next it. year, we don't need anything. So right. Now. Right. So, so I think we're looking at a motion to adjourn. We're making, no, no, we're making a <laughs> we're making a motion to sign a contract for FY up seventeen, right? Yes. Okay. Is that a motion? I just moved it. Rachel did it. I moved that we no, submit this to and the Kip seconded to the board of select for approval. And for Rachel the, moved it. Kip second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Six zero zero. Okay.
Okay. Thank you very much. Look All right. forward to another interesting and exciting year with the planning board. <laughs> or not. <laughs> We'd love it not to be not. <laughs> not looks good. The, the, that Chinese proverb, maybe live in interesting times, right? Uh, you know, please know. <laughs> and uh, we've set our date for August oh. 1st, so just in that regard, so we'll have exchanges. We'll find out if anything else to do with Eagle Brook, which we probably think not. We'll follow up on potential subdivision. Those are the only two things that might come up. Yeah, at like. this point, it doesn't seem like I need to be there on August 1st. So. And actually, I want to mention one of the things that's happening in town. I've been asked to attend a meeting on uh, July 27th with the select board where they're going to talk about uh, housing and maybe senior housing. Is that still on that agenda? It was. I haven't heard a thing uh, of it. There's some discussion, um, uh, again, about senior housing in town. Imagine that. Can I keep coming back? Who, who, who asked you? Who notified you of that? The, um, there's actually a new executive director of the Franklin Regional Housing Authority. Yeah. And she had an email with, with Doug and, I guess, Carol, and I thought it went to the whole planning board, the whole select board, but maybe not. Um, but it was in response to our, our housing production plan, which we planning board actually was doing a lot of work on it for a couple of years and we kind of just wanted to get it back on the table to see if there's any movement in it so I think it's, it not also, a, it's not a recommendation it's just a, a little discussion to see if the housing authority might be able to help i think was the offer which housing authority that's the question franklin Regional. right because we don't have one in this town right so. right and it also came up it's come Impossible. up a lot during the c so I, I know. CPC. CPC. CPC, CPC is we yeah. don't have There's a, a ton of money, money there, there to has do to that. Go to housing yeah. and, and it can't no be used projects. for anything else. So not that they're looking to spend the money no. necessarily, but if we have a no. need and we have money, let's let's do something. And some yeah. response. Without going into any more detail, it, that was related to the proposal that we had the preliminary meeting about. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, maybe that's why. Then. So we there might you go. I think I heard a mo motion to adjourn. I was that I was going to ask that we look at the mail first. Okay. All right. I'll go back to the cheap seats. <laughs> um, and most of it is just our lovely neighborhood towns telling I'll us tell them that to, good things are happening yeah. and they're making. I don't see any special like request to us. Um, what town is this one? Something about. I died yesterday. What is that? Is that green? Is it gear? Is it Melnick? Is it gear? Yeah. That's what I'm wondering. Planning board from Barway Farm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Melnick. Yeah. It's Melnick, yeah. So, but I don't know why this is, this is from Director of Division of Agricultural Conservation and Technical Assistance, and it's written to Mr. Jorgensen from AG, A Green Energy. It, you have requested an opinion from the Mass Department of Ag Resources as to the agricultural status of an of on-farm anaerobic digesters for the purpose of a local permit. So our way farm here in Deerfield has a received oh, it's this. Quite, it's underway quite a bit. <laughs> oh, this is like this is dated 2013. Why is this in our new mail? <laughs> I thought I've, been I didn't digesting, I've been digesting methane over there for a long time, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been digesting. Green Trail, Green Trail Economic Development. There's a really interesting workshop up there by this Kate Downs, if anybody knows her. It's about aging in place. This, by the way. I'm getting old just sitting here. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> We worked with her. She's great. I would just recommend it to anybody who has aging issues in their family. Well, just just for your information. I think we're all getting <coughs> older, so I know. I, mean, she, you know I just took a picture of it. This. Of what? This. That. She's doing it at the senior center. It's about uh -huh. um, ways to, you know, pay for in, like staying in your home. We talked a lot about this. Staying in your home with people coming into your house, right? right? Yeah. So yeah. in in home caregivers and all that. Kind of Good. Sorry. Is that it? Motion to a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'll second. Rachel, I'll second. Right. Kit. Yeah, Rachel and Kip. Motion is accepted. And it's 816. Peace out.